Ladies and gentlemen, this motion picture is dedicated to you, to you in this theater, and to all refugees from television throughout the world. We in the motion picture industry would like to pay tribute to a most wonderful person. And here he is, the American movie fan. We also would like to pay tribute to the British movie fan. Our hats are off to the Honorable Oriental Movie Fan. This is a French movie fan. He hasn't seen a movie in years. In all countries throughout the world, the movie fan enjoys the movie. Ah, ah, da, 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 da. Yes, there are movie fans everywhere, but wherever they are, you can bet they would all like to go to Hollywood or bus. The land of stardust, the land of glamour, this division and a cinderella. Everyone considers it a must. To get to Hollywood or bust Kids from Kansas to Pennsylvania Soon develop that movie mania Drive in their jalopies through the dust En route to Hollywood or bust When I park my tootsies in Hollywood, brother I'm gonna stay Till the day those footprints at ground men get up and start walking away. Land of burgers and land of weenies, bathing beauties in their bikinis. All agree in Paramount we trust. So hop a train or trolley, out to Charlie, Hollywood, Hollywood or takes the lead, Baxter is second, the stitch in time is third, one length behind is Miss Connie B, and now it's Baxter coming up fast, it's Baxter and she's a girl, it's Baxter and she's a girl, Baxter gaining ground, Baxter has taken the lead, she's a girl is hanging on, turning for home, Baxter moves in close, it's Baxter and she's a girl, coming into the stretch, it's Baxter and she's a girl neck and neck, Baxter is crowding, she's a girl, it's Baxter making his move, and now moving up, it's Tiny Tim. Tiny Tim coming up behind Bachelor. It's Tiny Tim right on Bachelor's tail. Say good night to the redhead. Good night, redhead. Are you going to let him talk to me that way? Yeah, yeah. I'll see you later. How much later? Three thousand bucks later. Beat it! The boss got awful nervous about his investment. Give me a chance, Bookie. I'm playing a sure thing tonight. Tonight? Who are you kidding? Tracks don't run at night. Uh, I'm telling you, I'll have more than three G's in collateral tonight. Collateral? Talk English! I just figured the smartest stunt ever pulled in New York. Ticket so. So look. Can you read? Very funny. Lucky ticket wins a car tonight. That is very good. Thank you. Those tickets are for the car, huh? A duplicate set. A kid that works for the printer's a friend of mine. Any number they call tonight, I got it. That's fine. Now, suppose the legal winner shows up with the legal ticket, then what? 
You've seen bank nights, church bazaars. Church bazaars? Look, you know, they call five and six numbers before they hit a ticket that someone in the audience is holding. But tonight, they're going to have a winner the first time out. Then I pay off the boss. Sounds legit. That's what worries me. What are you worried about, Bookie? I got a cold. It better. You could be called an awful long time. <laughs> a long time, huh? Oh. How about moving up, buddy? Huh? Oh. Oh, I'm awfully sorry. <laughs> I was reading. Good for you. She sure is. Who is? Anita Eckberg, my favorite actress. I saw her last picture six times. Couldn't be with a body like that. What couldn't be? Her last picture. Oh. <laughs> I get it. It's like a joke. <laughs> yeah, but it was a terrific picture. You see, in this picture, she plays the part of a girl who's searching. 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 What was she searching for? She didn't know. That's why she was always searching. Searching. You see, this was a terrific picture. It was called The Lavender Tattooer, co-starring Bertram Rodberger. It was produced by the Nathan Brothers and directed by William B. Hoffmeyer. Part of it was shot in Lower Tasmania. That was directed by Howard Rasnovich, costumes by Patricia Wonderstone. The screenplay was by Willie Rackauer, Harry Jones, and Florence Hirschfield. That was for The Woman's Touch. From a play by John and Betty Stetson, based on an incidental remark dropped by a waiter at Sardi's name of Nicholas Blaney in Technicolor and Vista Vision. <laughs> you only saw that six times? That's all. To me, the most wonderful part of the whole picture was the ballet ballet sequence where she did the Balinese dance. Oh, I'm awfully sorry. That was my fault. Can I help you? Never mind, Hey, that hurt this kid sure gets around. Hey, kid, how come you got so many of those tickets? Oh, well, I come here every night, Sundays and even my days off. Uh, I, I, that is from the delicatessen, because you see, I'm going to win the car, and then I'm going to drive to Hollywood, and I'm going to meet her. You're going to win the car, and you're going to meet who? Well, Anita, naturally, you know. And, and the reason I say I'm going to win the car is because I just have that very lucky feeling. I feel lucky, that's all. Well, lots of luck. Thank you very much. Excuse me. Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I uh, guess we all know why we're here, don't we? Yeah, they all came to see me win the car. <laughs> That's the spirit, young man. <laughs> now, I know we're all anxious for the big moment. And here it is. OK, book, it's post time. They're off and running. Miss Pettywood, principal of PS number 655, will draw the lucky number. Well, yeah, got some popcorn in there. Lady, I'm sorry. Wait, let me just get this up. <laughs> I'm sorry, lady. Wait, there's just a few pieces here of popcorn. Wow. <laughs> Wait one second. Here, down. Stay down. Nice hair. Good. Down. Thank you, Miss Pettywood. I will uh, read the lucky number slowly. Look, the minute I get on the stage, you blow. I blow, but just outside the door. K. K. Okay. One, three, six. K one three six. No, no K one three six. Three two. I will repeat the lucky number. K, one, three, six, three, two. What, K? What is it? K, three, nine? K, he needs to get numbers. K, one, one, three, six. K, one, three, six, two. These are R's. I don't want no R's, no H's, no M's, no L's, no R's, no M's, no L's, no K's. I got it. It can't be. I got that lucky feeling. Wait a minute, there's gonna be... Yeah. 
I'd run, too, for a car like this. What is your name, sir? Wiley, Steve Wiley. K-136-32, that's correct. I knew I had this number somewhere. Here. I've got it! Are you... Fool yourself in front of all these people? You made a mistake. No, I didn't. The winning ticket's between my teeth. Uh, yeah? Yeah. Good luck. <laughs> he's trying to pull a fast one. Now he says he swallowed it. Come on, give me the key. I'm ready to go. Oh, I know that boy. That's Malcolm Smith from the Robespierre Delicatessen. I've never known him to lie. Well, he don't look too well. He's cracking. Look. <laughs> You, sir, better take a cab. This car is mine. It is correct. There are two winners. <laughs> what do you think you're doing? I'm just practicing for Hollywood. My own car. I can't believe it. My very own car. Oh, boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Two cars were won, and two cars you're going to give away. You don't want me to bring legal action. No, I'll be reasonable, Mr. Wiley. You don't expect me to give away two cars. It's a double feature, give them each a car. Ah! Wiley! Wiley! Wiley, please! Ah! Kid, no matter what kind of a pitch he gives us, we each get a car, right? Right, but this one's mine. Look, no matter what he does, we don't budge, right? Right, but, but this one's mine. Oh, now, don't get soft no matter how he cries, right? Right, except I hate to see a man cry. Well, now, let's get down to cases. It's comparatively simple. He gets a car and I get a car. This car is for both of you. What's for both of you supposed to mean? You both won the car, you both get the car. Split it between you. Uh, Betty, will you drive this outside for the joint owners? And if you're not satisfied with my decision, you can sue the printer. He made the mistake. He has a very good point there. Why don't you sue the printer? Then you'll get your car. Me sue the printer? Listen, let's not get hasty, Malcolm. Maybe the nice man is right. Maybe he can't afford to give away two cars. Well, that ain't my fault. Well, it just so happens that I live in Hollywood. You live in Hollywood? Not only do I live in Hollywood, but uh, this young lady happens to be my next door neighbor. You, you know it. You know her. Do I know her? She drives me crazy, Malcolm. Me too. She keeps coming to my back door. Wants to borrow a couple cups of sugar. Sugar, it's nice, yeah. A couple eggs. Oh, eggs, good. I go over to her place. I borrow a grapefruit or two. Oh, that's cute. And we talk over the fence. You know how neighbors are. Yeah, but this is how my neighbors are. Let's talk about your neighbors. Talk about it. I will personally introduce you to her. Oh, that's soon wonderful. As soon as we get out I'm there. I'm very happy. We'll jump in the car and we'll go to Hollywood together. How about that, old buddy, old pal, Malcolm? Oh, that's wonderful. I've never ever been anybody's buddy before. Nobody's buddy? Oh, no. As a matter of fact, you know, when I was a kid, I was never chosen. Never chosen? No, not for nothing. I'll even go further with you. You know, I never even ever had a pen pal. No pen pal? But I wouldn't want her to know that, Anita, that is, because I wouldn't want her to think I was peculiar. That's our secret, Milk. Oh, that's wonderful. Then we'll be pals like Bert Lancaster and Catherine Hepburn in The Rainmaker. Yeah. Our first car. Ooh, could I please get in before you? I love to smell new cars. Go ahead, take a great big whiff. Oh, 
I don't mean to be facetious. Facetious? Yeah. Did I hear Hollywood? Well, he had the legal ticket, see, you understand? So I had to make off like we're partners in the you car. You have a partner, remember? I know I got a partner. Bookie, look, I'll get rid of the kid and I'll come back with the car. Oh, I'll wait here. Yeah, you wait right here. Remember what Fashusha say? Fashusha? Yeah. He talks funny. You like it, old buddy? Oh, I love it. And we'll keep it nice and shiny all the way to Hollywood, won't we, Steve? Sure we will. <gasps> All right, I'll be back for you as soon as I get my things packed. And I'll be right here waiting for you, buddy. All right, come on, boy. Come on, boy. Did you miss me, boy? Come on. That's a good boy. Hello, sweet boy. What is that? This is my dog. His name is Mr. Bascom. I thought for a minute it was Swaps. Oh, no, this is my Mr. Bascom. Well, there it is. See, I won the car, just like I promised. And now we'll go to Hollywood, and you'll meet Lassie. Okay, Malcolm, I'll see you. Right, hurry back, buddy. Goodbye, buddy. Goodbye, old buddy. You too, so long. Get out. Hey, out of the car. Hey, will you get out of here? Why don't you go down the street, play with Lassie? Lassie's down there. She's a doll. Go on, get, get out of the car. Okay, sit there. I think I'm getting my brains massaged by Bookie Benny on account of you. Get out. Get out. Oh, I'm glad you waited, Steve. I'm a pretty fast packer-upper. Hey, Mr. Bascom, where's my buddy? Here I am. Land of stardust and land of glamour This division and cinerama Everyone considers it a must You'll get to Hollywood or bust <laughs> Kids from Kansas to Pennsylvania Soon develop that movie mania, riding their jalopies to the dust and route to Hollywood or bust. Boy, I'm lucky. Do you know when I first found out I was lucky? When? When I entered to send in a Poochie Pup Dog Food Jingle for the Poochie Pup Dog Food Jingle Contest. You want to hear how it goes? No, but I will. Okay. I eat Poochie Pup Dog food out of the can. It makes me eat my food just like a man. My coat is so glossy, shiny and bright. My master can find me in the middle of the night. You like it? I think it'll live forever. Maybe longer. Yeah, but <clears throat> actually, I cheated. You cheated? Yeah, you see, I don't really like Poochie Pup dog food. It tastes oh, awful. No. But it was worth it to win Mr. Bascom. You know, uh, I'm surprised you don't take better care of that dog. Oh, I take care of him. He was with me all day, under the hot pastrami counter at the delicatessen. You know, we've been driving for hours, and this dog needs exercise. Don't you ever take him for walks? Oh, yeah, but... You're driving, and I didn't want to bother you with Mr. Bascom's exercise. Bother me? Well, it's a pleasure, buddy pal. Well, gee, it's real nice of you to think about Mr. Bascom that way. It shows you have a good heart. Thank you very much, Steve. Go ahead, take him over the hill. Let him run way over the hill. Oh, yeah, I will. And he runs fast. The fastest dog you ever saw in your whole life. Watch him run. He's a fast dog. Come on, let's go. Let's go, Bascom. Come on, come on. boy. Over the hill. Way over the hill. Good. Way over. Go on.
You wait here. Yeah, I'll wait here. I'll take the keys. Why? Just so Mr. Bascom doesn't chew on them. Oh, Mr. Bascom wouldn't do that. He loves our car. You're telling me. He doesn't trust us at all. Hello. Hello, Bookie. Steve. You think. Where are you? Is that you, Bookie? You sound funny. Just because I'm talking without any teeth. The boss fixed me good. But that's nothing compared to what he's going to do to you. All right, take it easy, Bookie. Look, I couldn't shake the kid. He's got a dog big enough to be a winner at High Lear. What could I do? Well, you better stay out of sight. Because if the boss don't find you, I will. He wants his three grand. Oh, he'll get his three grand. Look, the kid and I are driving out to Hollywood. When we get there, I'll sell the car. Then I'll send you the money, and I'll probably still have enough money to make a killing at Hollywood Park. The car! He took his... my car! Oh, I just wanted to try and drive it one time. How could you start it without the keys? Oh, there was an extra set in the glove compartment. Oh, I know. You were scared that something happened to me. You have such a good heart. First it's Mr. Bascom, and then it's me. You gotta stop worrying so much about it, Steve. But I guess that's difficult for you because you're such a kind man. Okay, Hollywood. Here we come.
I thought you put gas in the car. I did, but I told him to put very little in so the gas wouldn't evaporate in the tank. Will you get that hound out of that car? He weighs a ton. Yeah, he does weigh a lot. That's why he's tired. As a matter of fact, he's dog tired now. He's dog tired. <clears throat> Let's see now. Hmm. Eight and five is 13, and then you carry your three and one. One and six is seven and eight. Eight and five What's is... What's with the scratch sheet, Malcolm? Oh, I'm just figuring the first day's expenses, Steve. Let's see here now. Gas and oil. Uh -huh. Lunch, one corned beef, Steve. One hamburger, me. 13 hamburgers, Mr. Bascom, that's correct. One chewing gum, me. One tip to red-headed waitress. Hey, Steve, how come you made me give that waitress such a big tip? Just keeping in practice, Malcolm. Oh. Breakfast, then. One tomato juice, Steve. One bowl of crunchies, Malcolm. Four orders of ham and eggs for Mr. Bascom. Look, why don't you lay it all out, Malcolm? Then when we get to Hollywood, we'll sell the car and we'll square away. Now, don't bother me with small details, huh? Oh, uh, well, Steve, uh, uh, let, let, me, let me just say this to you, you see? Please, Malcolm, not now. I'm well, tired. Well, couldn't I just one little incy-wincy detail? All right, what? Well, I don't mind laying out the money except uh, I don't have any more. You what? You're yelling at me, Steve. What did you say? I said I don't have any more money. I don't know how it happened. Oh, 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 the, the road is behind. The car is with the door. There's a, the, the front, there's a, a rut, and well, Mr. Bascom can't drive. He doesn't have a license.
back one gallon of gas. We may not even make it to the next gas station. Well, don't worry about it, Steve. I I'll get that lucky feeling again. You better get it fast. I think there's something wrong with the motor. Oh, oh. <laughs> that's not the motor, Steve. That's Mr. Bascom's stomach. He's very hungry. He's hungry. I'm starved. <laughs> I almost smell hamburger. <coughs> hamburger? Give me some of that. <coughs> Ow! Will you tell him to let go, Malcolm? Uh, uh, let go of Steve's arm, Mr. Bascom. That's not nice. Shame on you. Steve needs that arm to drive with. Oh, that's telling him, Malcolm. <coughs> Look at what that guy did to our shiny new car. Yeah, will you see what we do to his crate? <laughs> Oh, look at the poor old lady. I'd rather look at a rich young lady. Oh, let's stop and pick her up, Steve. She might be somebody's mother. Would you like a lift, lady? I'd be ever so grateful. All righty. Watch it now. Oh, you're a dear, sweet young man. Oh, my, does he bite? Only me, lady. Hey, Malcolm, the motor's running. Oh, come on. Sorry. <laughs> you remind me of my grandmother. She was awful nice, too, and she used to take me to movies all the time. Do you like the movies? Oh, yes, indeed. What kind of movies do you like best? Oh, gangster movies. <laughs> me, too. I pack a rod, too, sister. Clam up, Sonny. Malcolm, will you stop bothering me while I'm... Stop here? the car, handsome. Shame on you. You're a naughty old lady. Shame, shame. Shut up! Listen, lady, one word from us and that dog will tear you apart. He's a killer. Get him, Mr. Bascom. Get her, get her! Oh, no. Well, bless his gentle heart. Get out! <laughs> Somebody's mother, huh?
But look what you've done to my running board. Never mind your running board. We need a lift. Hey, you're wrecking my car. We got robbed. Our car was stolen. It's all right. We only had a gallon of gas. She'll run out. Move over. Let me drive. this thing go any faster? Step on the gas, Steve! Look out! My fenders fell off! Oh, we'll get them later. You see the car? Who's gonna fix my floorboard? We will, as soon as we catch that old lady. What old lady? The old lady that stole our car. And they're the worst kind. Like the old lady in chloroform and old calico. That was produced by... Malcolm, quiet! You see our car? Not yet! Go faster! Malcolm, will you answer me? Where are you? Here I am. What are you doing out there? I think I see our car. Gee, we're lucky. Not a scratch. It's a good thing that old lady ran out of gas. Old lady, we're out of gas. <sighs> She's got gas. <sighs> oh, wait a minute, lady. We're out of gas. Well, you're here. lucky. I'm almost out of car. Here I am, minding my own business, driving to Las Vegas, and suddenly I'm ambushed. What, are you going to Vegas in this thing? My great grandmother made it in a covered wagon. But all she ran into were wild Indians. Well, are you satisfied? You've ruined my motor now. I oh, don't cry, lady. I can fix it. I know all about cars. I I'll go get your fenders. Yeah, don't cry, honey. He, he knows all about fenders and cars. So he'll get them for you. <laughs> he will. It's fixed. Yeah, well, what about those? Oh, those are just spare parts. Go ahead, try it. And as they say in the French movies, voila. Oh, I'm sorry, Malcolm, for being so angry. Thank you very much. Oh, it was our fault. Then uh, thank you for the gas. Bye-bye. <laughs> Say in the French movies. Voila! Wait. Okay. Voila! She's a nice girl, isn't she, Steve? And she's got nice red hair, too. What's nice about her is the 40 bucks she got selling her wreck. Now we can eat. Just the two of us Can't afford to disappoint the moonlight My, what lovely scenery Cupid's own machinery Made to trap a nervous chap like me Let's be friendly but let's be discreet Must I fight the feeling That I'm fallen 
Should we accidentally kiss I'd give up the fine And we could be more than just good friends tonight Be wise, be smart I always tell my heart When it gets to the point where you're dreaming of her That's the time to run for cover Not that I'm allergic to romance But a guy likes to have a fighting chance Let's be friendly Just the two of us Can't afford to disappoint the moonlight My, what lovely scenery Cupid's own machinery Made to trap a nervous chap like me Let's be friendly But let's be discreet Must I fight the feeling That I'm fallen Should we accidentally kiss I'd give up the fight And we could be more than just good friends to love. Nice music. Wrong lyrics. You have someone waiting in Vegas. I have a job waiting in Vegas. You know, as soon as I saw you, I figured you for a gambler. Relax, honey. We won't play for keeps. Look, it's getting kind of late, don't you think? So that's it, huh? The chauffeur and uh, mystery passenger. Mr. Wiley, if it'll ease your mind any, I'll give you my vital statistics. Now you're talking. I like statistics when they're vital. Well, there's no mystery. My vital statistics are as follows. Name, Terry Roberts, birthplace, Weehawken, New Jersey, age, my business. Occupation, chorus girl, at present going to Vegas to work at the Silver Spur, and after that on to Hollywood for an audition, and after that, future undecided. You know, as soon as I saw you, I figured you for a chorus girl. <laughs> You're too close to the fire, Mr. Wiley. You're getting overheated. Future undecided. Now, you can't go around with an undecided future. People talk. Look, Mr. Wiley, we were brought together because I had $40 and you needed same. Well, you got my $40, but that's all you get. I don't want to get. I want to give. Sorry, no takers. And speaking of statistics. All right. What would you like to know? Where I was born, how I vote? Or how an attractive man manages to stay single. You get better odds at a racetrack. Better than 50-50? That's only 50-50 on the tote board. You know, the minute you leave the starting gate, the odds are six to four because you're furnishing a rundown apartment. Then the odds drop seven to three because you need a larger place, an extra room for the little monster that your ever-loving comes up with. Now the little monster grows, becomes a big monster. School expenses. Now you got to start taking everything that the crummy boss hands out because you can't afford to lose your crummy job. Little Junior's got to go to college. Dear Pop, need money, met a girl. The odds are now nine to one, you haven't even hit the far turn yet. By the time you get to the finish line, you gotta hurry up and die so you'll have enough money left to pay for your own funeral expenses. That's a bad deal. And that's playing for keeps, is it? It's a parlay you can't win, Red. Good night, Mr. Wiley.
a big mutt. Scram! Get out! I always get the lucky feeling. What lucky feeling? Well, it's very hard to describe, but you see, I get uh, an itching in my fingers and, and then a twitching in my left eye. And then my head starts jerking, see, like as if I have a stiff collar on. I have the itching, the twitching, and the jerking. Oh, yeah, like the first time I saw this car. And then when everything is happening at one time, the itching, the twitching, and the jerking, I know I can't lose because I got the lucky feeling. <laughs> <laughs> oh, now that doesn't really happen, Malcolm. Well, I won this car, didn't I? Yes, yes, you won this car. Half of it. Oh, well, then I'm even luckier than I thought, because I got Steve as a partner. Not only is he my partner, but he's the next-door neighbor to Anita Eckberg. Oh, is he really? Oh, yeah, they're neighbors, really. Which means she's going to be my neighbor. Just think I'll see her every day. Hm. Just imagine. I'll see her when she's hanging out. Her undies, and... She'll see me when I'm hanging out. My undies. <laughs> it's just like a dream. It certainly is. Where are we? Uh, oh, Chicago. Chicago? How did we get to Chicago? Did I do bad? You took a wrong turn. I got too many friends in Chicago I don't want to see. Now put the top up and let's get out of here. All right. Oh, man, it's coming up. It takes time.
when you're down in Arizona, down. Isn't that doing it the hard way? Oh, no, I once saw Gregory Peck do this in a movie. Did you see Gregory Peck in that movie? It was produced and directed Malcolm, by... Malcolm, in the movies, they have the sticks already fixed, so they start burning right away. Oh, yeah, I know what you mean. I saw Gregory Peck do that. He took the stick in his hand, and then he opened this up, and voila. Voila. Good old Greg. Is Gregory Peck one of your Hollywood friends? And where do you think he got his gray flannel suit? <laughs> Where's Red? Oh, she's taking a swim. Taking a swim? Uh-huh. Hmm. Oh. What's the matter? I got a stomach ache. Oh. Yeah, I've been drinking too much coffee. I I'm not getting my nice warm milk like I should. Oh, that's a shame. Do you want me to go get you some nice warm milk? <laughs> Where can you get nice warm milk around here? Unless uh, there's a cow near that barn way over there. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, I'll go get you some nice warm milk. And don't you worry about it being nice and warm, because that cow's been out in the sun all day. Sun. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. La, 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 la. Don't get overheated, Red. Good morning, Mr. Wiley. Good morning. Did you sleep well? How could I? I was still worried about your undecided future. Malcolm, would you get me some coffee? Relax, honey. He went for a walk. Oh, he, uh, he went for a walk, did he? Mm -hmm. In this heat? Well, how can the heat affect Malcolm? He's off his rocker to start with. <sighs> He's off his rocker about you. Why can't you be like Malcolm? Because I've met Steve Wiley's before, Mr. Wiley. Great guys, I love them. As Malcolm would say, this is just like Burt Lancaster and Deborah Carr in From Here to Eternity, produced by. Well, whoever produced you certainly wasn't after an Oscar. Don't I measure up to the other Wiley? You certainly do. You're all out of the same mold, always looking for something for nothing. I don't like you for what you're doing to Malcolm. You're going to break his heart with all your big talk about Hollywood and your, your, your movie star neighbors. Well, personally, I think all you know about Hollywood is what you've read in the racing form. Excuse me. 
Sir, I just came in here to see your wife. How is the little woman? Should he be any different? Well, he is. He's all right. He's getting me some milk. Milk from a bull? A bull? He's milking a bull? That's impossible. Well, that's what I thought. Oh, please. Oh. Oh. Timber! Timber! Timber, he's cutting trees. That's Malcolm, always clowning. Timber! Now wave it in front of the bull. Wave it in front of it. Wave it at the bull. Oh, you're like Ludo Valentino in Blood and Sand. El Toro. Matador. Toriador. Picador. Pichador. Matador. Atta boy, now he's afraid of you. Forget it. Well, I can't forget it. You could have been killed. I said forget it. I certainly won't. You know, I made a mistake. You're a different kind of Mr. Wiley, Mr. Wiley. Well, now we're getting somewhere. Yes, but we're only getting to Las Vegas, remember?
Yes, I... I guess it is. I guess it's the end of the end of the line, I guess. <laughs> I'll get your bags for you, Terry. Come on, Mr. Bascom. Come on, boy. Andrew Barry. Mr. Bascom, come back here. Mr. Bascom, Mr. Bascom, excuse me, have you seen Mr. Bascom? Mr. Bascom, one moment, sir. Mr. Bascom, Mr. Bascom. <laughs> Oh, there he, oh, there he is. Hey, Mr. Bascom. Never mind. Mr. He's Bascom. No, you don't have hey, to. Hey, Mr. Bascom. Oh. Mr. Bascom. <laughs> Sorry, man, but you see, he... Oh! It's you! Live! Not on film and not a kinescope, but in the flesh! And all my flesh. <laughs> Thank you for calling your dog, Mr... Uh... Uh, Mr. Bascom, and I'm awfully glad to meet you. I, I mean, he's Mr. Bascom. I'm, I'm Mr... Uh, no, I'm me. I, I'm Malcolm Smith. The Malcolm Smith that writes your special every mail letters. I've licked a thousand stamps for you. When I dreamed of meeting you, and I dreamed of your hair, and your nose, and your lips, and your chin, and your eyes and your, your and your fingertips. We're gonna be neighbors. Neighbors? I just moved. We can share the same incinerator. Just think, I can deliver my letters in person. No way, you crazy. Oh, 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 wait, oh! 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 What are you doing? Anita! That's Anita! She fell in! I'm gonna go in and save her! I can't swim, but we'll both die together! <laughs> I know, I know. You told me that, but you are my psychiatrist and you must talk to her. She's fallen in love with a great Dane and I don't think they are compatible. But gee whiz, Steve, she's your neighbor. You can square things for me. Listen, Malcolm, we're going to Hollywood and sell the car. You got that straight? Yeah, but if we sold the car here, I'd have some money and I could buy Anita present, then she'd forgive me. We can get more for the car in Hollywood. Oh. What's the matter? I'm, I'm getting it. I, I'm getting it. Looks like you already got it. No, shh. The tingle of my fingers, see? The tingle of my fingers. There it is. There's the, the twitch. The twitch always follows the tingle. The tingle, then the twitch, and there goes the eye. You see it, Steve? There goes the eye. The left eye, first the twitch. The tingle in fingers, the eye. Uh-huh. There. I got it. G give me some money. Don't get you think a transfusion would be better? No, get, give me some money, Steve. All I got is two bits. Well, that's enough. Give me that. G hey, hey, here, hey, that hey. let's have it. I, I, got, I, got, I got that feeling. And, and when the twitch and the arm... And, and, and Malcolm! I, I, I got to walk It's locked. It's locked. Take, Take it easy, I, I know, Malcolm. Look, I feel You've been now. with Anita no, too long. No, it's too close for you. Left eye with jerking. Eye. With jerking left eye. Look, I got, I got, I got you're it. sick. You're sick. No, which eye? Which eye? Which way? Which, which, which way is the eye pointing? Which way? Which way? Pointing gets shot. Well, lift the lid. Tell me which way it's pointing. That way. That's the one. That, that's the luck, lucky, lucky one. Oh. Oh. Ah, there goes our last two bits. Which way is the which way is the jerking? 
This way. Th that's right, the one. Come, come on. on. The jerky. That's it. Over here. With, with jerky. This is the table. Seven the loser on the next man's shoes. This feels very lucky right here. What? Craps? You know how to play craps? Well, no, but there's no handle on this game. I don't know. What... Don't need a handle here. But I have the lucky feeling. I you have? have? Yeah, let, yeah me... let me have some chips here. All right. Yeah, chips, yeah. Those. And you put, what do I, I, I uh, do I hold the chips? No, you take the, take the dice. It, where? Here, take these two dice. Yeah, take and, these, and, and I throw. hold it. Just what? throw them, throw them. Throw them, all right. No! Oh. <laughs> Come here. Okay, now take the dice. All right. Roll them down there. Yeah, well, these, okay, well, take shoot these everything. dice. Here's this. Not one. all of them. <laughs> Don't roll this. Roll two at a time. Come here. Just two dice now. Can well, I, I don't know, see, and I'm not looking here, at this, here's a two. this money. It. All Take right, now. now. Roll roll a seven. Here's a number. No, roll it down at the end. Roll a seven. By Come the on. end. A seven. Oh, I never. Oh. The 11, the winner. Oh, 11. You got your mind on a seven. What yeah, is that? It's 11 is fine. That's yeah, but good. we lost everything. Are you going to pay me? Uh, pay him because that was an 11. Uh, Mister, no. hey, innkeeper, uh, pay this man pay for that here. number. That's what is it, it now? I got to roll again. Make another pass. Can you make a pass? Make another pass. I can make a pass. Go ahead, make a pass. Honey, how would no, you? No, like? not that kind of pass. Oh, you mean make like this? Another yeah, another roll. Shoot it. Six. Six is the number. Six I is lost the number. That no, you didn't lose. Now make a make six. six. Here's the dice. Yeah, you but like you said a seven before. Make a six now. Here's a, all right, here's a six. Two, three, a no, six. No, you now. roll them to make a six. All hit the board and come back. Make a six. Oh, the same way like this. A six. Eight. It's an eight. Make a six. We lost to a lot. No, we didn't lose anything. Make a six. Yeah, but oh, you yeah. said a six and I made an eight. That's time. all right. You're allowed to do that. Oh, all right. Six. Just turn up. Come Put on. your hand, lady. Lady! Look. Six the winner. Six the That's it. Six. Oh! 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 oh, that's a good game. All right. You can meet him again. Let me make sixes some more oh, time. Then wait a minute. Make another six. You but... got that lucky feeling? Oh, I feel it in the fingers and all. Do you think you can make snake eyes? Yeah, here. Yeah, snakes look like this. No, no. Make snake eyes. What snake eyes? I just made them for you. No, make snake eyes. Two. Aces, two aces, one on each dice. Make it 30 to one. Oh, I can do that. You sure? Oh, I'm so excited. Give me the dice. 30 to one. Put all of this on snake eyes. Oh, 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 oh. All of them. That's it. Give me the. They're taking the money, but they're not giving me the they're dice. Not locking it up. But mister, give me the dice. Right, they're coming out. Snake eyes. You make snake eyes, and we'll change the name of this place. <laughs> Don't drown them. Just make snake eyes. Oh, well, I, I see them do that in the Here movies, like the quick Monty Quick. Make Don't snake eyes 30 to 1. Snake Whoa! eyes. Snake eyes. Oh! 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 What happened? Oh! Oh! Oh, Steve, what's the matter? What happened? D did I do bad? Why'd you faint? You throw two aces. Yeah, that's what you told me to 30, do. You nearly won nine or ten thousand dollars. You won. We won nine or ten thousand dollars. How do you do that? Well, it's the lucky feeling. Remember, I told you about the itching and the twitching and the jerking. I knew something was the, just driving me to come to this table. Nine or ten thousand dollars, nothing. Because when I get the lucky, nine or ten thousand dollars. <laughs> On the lighter side, in Las Vegas today, these two fellows, Steve Wiley and Malcolm Smith, made history when they pyramided 25 cents to a small fortune in less than 10 minutes. Hey, boss, there's Wiley. He's in Vegas. In Washington, speculation Las Vegas, is huh? as to whether the president will... Get me Sammy Ross in Los Angeles. He can make it to Vegas in an hour. I concur. Come on, come on. Don't put that on yet, Red. You mess up my collar? Steve, why, I thought you'd left hours ago. Well, Malcolm got lucky, and I thought maybe some of it might rub off on me. Steve, please. Oh, don't mind us. This is making it the hard way, but where were we? We're on in a minute. Steve, I'll lose my job. You just quit. We're going to Hollywood. No, no, it wouldn't be any good. Look, Malcolm and I got it all figured out. With the money he won, we can get into some kind of a racket, a business. Real nine to five, uh, five days a week kind of business, hmm? No horses, Honey, no... Honey, we won't even buy our first monster a hobby horse. Make book on that. Now you go ahead and get yourself ready, and I'll find our best man.
the other guy says, I didn't even figure I was in the same town. I had a magazine, thought I'd wait around, and he sees that there wasn't even a chance to catch the bus. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> ah! 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 Catch the bus. <laughs> wait up. <laughs> catch the bus. Let's have some more champagne and caviar. Waiter, <laughs> let's have some more champagne and caviar. Waiter, while you're at it, how about bringing us some more champagne and more caviar? Waiter, will you stop jumping around and please stand still so I can give you my order? We'd like to have some more champagne. And more caviar. Don't be ridiculous. I've ordered enough caviar. How much do you think I can afford? Just get some champagne. Thank you. Waiter, you're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Well, bottoms up. <laughs> Excuse me, I forgot there were ladies present. <laughs> All right, easy, Sammy. You're wrinkling my cummerbund. Yeah, I'll wrinkle your brains. The boss hears you're loaded. His battery's out of order. Yeah, uh -huh. you and your partner had your picture on TV. From two bits to a fortune, I said. It was my partner's loot, he won it. So you borrow it from him. Now your battery's out of order. So I borrow from him. Sammy, leave the kid alone. I didn't fly up here for nothing, chum. Maybe I can make it worth your while. <laughs> Hollywood. Oh, let's go back to Las Vegas, Steve. Please, I gotta see Anita again. Oh, I... Malcolm, why don't you forget about Anita? You're just another fan to her. Not after the present I sent her. Please, Steve, turn around. Relax, boy. A lot of fans send presents. Yeah, with real diamonds in it. Real diamonds? There better be real diamonds. I spent all the money I won on it. You spent all your winnings on a present? Yeah. For a beautiful necklace to go around her beautiful neck. Well, before my hands go around your beautiful neck, how much money we got left? Oh, don't worry, Steve. I still got your quarter. Here it is. Uh. Would I do bad? What, was it bad? What I what I do with bad? Honest, I didn't want to sell my half of the car, really. It's become part of me. Can't you think of something else? I'm thinking of something. I'm thinking of double homicide. One for each of your heads. Look, will you just listen for a second? This is the first car I ever owned. Really, it's the first thing I ever owned that didn't eat Poochie Pup dog food. Look, why don't you be brave, boy? You know, fly right through it. You know, like Jimmy Stewart in 30 seconds over Tokyo. No, that was Strategic Air Command. Oh, that was a I'm Paramount sorry. picture. That's yeah. all right. But I don't want to fly. I just want to roll the roll on my new car. I love it so much, I even made up a poem about it. Would you like to hear it? My new car. Oh, how it ran. It's as red as a beautiful slice of ham. As shiny and bright as a frying pan. It shouldn't belong to no stupid Sam. My new car. Oh, You know, I never thought I'd live to say this, but I like that Poochie Pup poem much better. Yeah, I like that one, oh, too. Would you like on. to hear it again? I could sing it. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, uh, perfect condition. <laughs> uh, you're right, boy. <laughs> Clean as a whistle. <laughs> Uh, you read my sign. You know how stupid I am. You yeah, know. yeah, I know that. <laughs> uh, I'll give you fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred. Let's go around again. <laughs> oh, come on. Now look, this car's only a week old. I think we should at least get four thousand. Oh, uh, cars depreciate fast that first week, boy. <laughs> Not that fast, boy. Come on, let's get out of here. <laughs> 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 I'm sure glad you didn't
didn't sell, Steve. We'd be more stupid than stupid if we were ever stupid enough to sell the stupid. No, inside, stupid. Uh, <laughs> no gas? Uh, you really are low on cash. <laughs> <laughs> There's your half, Malcolm. Thank you. There's your 40, Terry. I'll get your cab. Taxi! Taxi? Where are you going, Terry? I didn't know I was going anywhere. Malcolm said, just where am I going? You said you had an audition in Hollywood? This is Hollywood. Oh. And what was Vegas? An audition, too? That's about it. Oh, I'm sorry I didn't make good, Mr. Wiley. Goodbye. <laughs> say anything, but here's a deposit. I'd like you to hold the car for a few days. I'm gonna get lucky and buy it back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You, you, you better get awful lucky. <laughs> this is a very nice business you have here. <laughs> hey, Steve, where'd Terry go? Never mind where Terry went. Here. Here's the rest of your money. My money? You already gave me my half. This is your half. No, it's all yours. The whole car is yours. It always was. I just got in on a deal with a phony ticket. A phony ticket? Yeah, a phony ticket. I had it printed up myself. You mean in the theater with the... Oh, well, what's the difference, Steve? We're friends now. What's the difference how we met? Friends? I tried to steal your car. I'd have gotten away with it if it wasn't for that hound of yours. Yeah, yeah I understand that, Steve, but remember, I'd have never known about the phony ticket order stealing if you didn't tell me. Which means that you're very noble. You're as noble as Abraham Lincoln or Raymond Massey. Malcolm, this may come as a shock to you, but Anita Eckbert isn't even my neighbor. Oh, I know it. You know that? Oh, yeah, I know that, too, from reading the movie magazine. So, you see, you weren't lying. You were just pretending, Steve. Pretending? I was lying, Malcolm. Look, I'm in trouble. And anybody with me is in trouble. I owe a bookie big money, and this is a big bookie. Yeah, well, that's all right, Steve, because, well, let's see. Uh, I can get you some money. I can get the lucky feeling again. Where are we going to find the crab tables? Under the orange trees? Wait a minute. Do you think you can get that lucky feeling again? I know I can. Hollywood Park, here we come. Taxi! Yeah, but I can't go to the races dressed in these clothes. All right, we'll change it to cab. Then we'll check our luggage. Turning for home, it's King Leo by a length, limping home by a head, dragon fire by a neck, and hot ribbon. In the stretch, it's King Leo leading by three lengths, ahead of limping home, dragon fire, and hot ribbon. And the winner is King Leo. You and your lucky feeling. Gee, I'm sorry. Come on. But Steve, listen to me. Oh, quiet. I've done all the listening to you I'm gonna do. But don't be mad at me, Steve. Will you be quiet? You want us to get thrown out of here? No, I like it here. Gosh, I can't believe it. We're in the actual Hollywood Bowl. You know I never slept in a bowl before. Would you believe it? Neither did I. It just so happens tonight, I haven't got enough money for a nice hotel room. Yeah, but, but, but I told you before, Steve, this is the first time my lucky feeling didn't work. You told me. You told me. Now get some sleep. But I'm not sleepy. I'm too excited. Do you realize this is the Hollywood Bowl where some of the great symphony conductors conduct some of their great symphonies? I know. I know. And do you also realize that the Hollywood Bowl has 20,000 seats and is completely surrounded by 2,496 trees? Look, if you don't clam up, one of those 2,496 trees are going to have a limp body hanging from them. Now get some sleep. All right. I'm not to get
Anita Ekberg starts shooting her Vista Vision picture at Paramount today. The blonde star is now over the severe cold she caught in Las Vegas swimming pool. So annoying. Paramount is also testing Terry Roberts for a singing, dancing role in the new Elvis Presley movie. Miss Roberts, previous experience was small. You know something? Yeah, I know something. I was just dreaming about Anita, and you know what? She was wearing my necklace. You know, it's funny. I dreamed about Anita, too. And what right do you have to be dreaming about my girl? Malcolm, all we did was talk about you. Oh, yeah? And, oh, is she mad at you? Oh, oh no. she's angry with you. No. Yeah, she says that no nice girl takes expensive gifts from total strangers. She wants to go to the studio and take it back so I can pay off Bookie Benny. Take it back? Mm hmm What do you want me to be, an Indian giver? Yeah, give her an Indian. That's not so personal. Oh, yeah, that... Come on, Malcolm. Come on. Come on, Mr. Bascom. Come on. Come on, Malcolm. But, Steve, I'm trying to tell you, you can't just walk into a studio. You can't walk into Paramount Studio or any other studio. It says so in a fan magazine. Hey, you. Huh? Is that a real dummy you got there? This is really a real dummy. Cut it out, Steve. Maybe she's in there. Good idea. It looks like love. It feels like love And I confess it's got me rocking on my heels like love How else can I account for that unexpected What's the matter, kid? I'm sorry, I, I, I just can't seem to get with it today Maybe I could come back some other time, hmm? Honey, it's a love song. Just sing it like you mean it. Okay, boys. I thought you were a single. Only duets from here on in. Quiet! Okay, everybody, quiet. It's our 
Come, Mr. Bascom, it's her. All right, Anita. Now, uh, now in this scene, remember, Napoleon is just returning from Elba. Now, uh, now you're waiting for Napoleon, breathlessly, impatiently. Uh, he's your husband. You're, you're his wife. And you love him. And he loves you. All right, quiet. Roll him. <laughs> Action. Malcolm Smith, I came with Mr. Bascom. Get that man! Throw him out of the studio! There he goes! Anita, are you all right? That boy, bring him back. Bring him back here! And get his dog, too. And his dog, too! Egberg? Only for giving me such an expensive gift. You must take it back. Oh. Well, isn't there something I can give you? Yes, there is. What? You may give me your dog. Oh, I could never give you Mr. Bascom. I couldn't give him away. I don't want you to give him away. I just want to borrow him for a while. Oh. Well, Mr. Bascom would like that. Yeah, that's all right. This is Wendell Niles greeting you from Hollywood's most famous landmark, Grauman's Chinese Theater on Hollywood Boulevard. We're going to see a wonderful picture tonight, but even more important to the picture is the story behind the scenes. The story of a movie fan and his dog. Here they come now. Oh! 